Hi everybody, uh, this is the next session uh, in the series uh, Goodbye Psychopaths and uh, this one's entitled How to Spot a Psychopath. Um, before I go on to that, and this is a really important session, um, just some explanation about the last session I had coming from a query from somebody. Somebody asked me, as those who were on this narcissistic spectrum at the low end, are they also called codependent or labelled as codependent, people pleasers, people with strong empathy for, um, for others but maybe uh, slightly low self-esteem, which I'd say yes, this is, um, these are particularly uh, the group of people that are prey to the predators of, of the psychopaths there. Um, interesting enough, psychopaths themselves have a dependency uh, and addiction uh, to control uh, these people. Um, the great thing is that uh, those who survive um, these attacks um, and are helped actually move more uh, towards, uh, up the line, uh, towards a healthy narcissism and healthy self-respect. And that's certainly the aim of the therapists um, and all the other people who are trying to help. Okay, <clears throat> let's go straight into how to spot uh, a narcissist. And this is really controversial. Um, there are experts in the field who suggest that we shouldn't be labelling people uh, as psychopaths unduly, and of course I'll go along with that to a certain extent. Um, however, uh, I believe we've gone slightly in the wrong direction. I think we need to be alerted to the signs um, and make our own minds up in the right way. We'd have to say the experts haven't been particularly good at this, and that's why we have uh, psychopaths in charge of so many important um, institutions and involved in so many destructive relationships. Um, so I believe there has to be another way. Having said that, um, I have a lot of respect for the disease manuals um, uh, uh, which describe uh, psychopathy and also uh, researchers like Robert Hare who give you a checklist for a certain number of these traits um, and you come up with a score and if the score is high then it's likely the person is a psychopath. However, you and me um, probably find that quite difficult to keep in our minds and so today I really wanted to um, uh, give you some indication uh, of what I've learned uh, through, through bitter experience to a certain extent but also through, through a bit of research into what we should do first, how we should become uh, alerted, what are the red flags. Okay. Now, I believe the most important thing, if we're confronted with somebody uh, in our lives, either at work or in a relationship, uh, or maybe say in, in a position of power in local and, and, and uh, national politics, we should do our homework on that person. Uh, just like in my medical training, the most important thing we can do is take a history. Um, it's not just uh, what is presenting to us on that day, we need to see whether a pattern has developed in the past. And like never ever in history, uh, well in the last a few thousand years anyway, have we had such a great database uh, to use, and the person in the street to use. How we use it, of course, we're all learning how to be discriminatory, but ultimately we have, we have Google and the other search engines. So the first thing I would have to say is, is do a check, because in most cases uh, the malignant narcissist or the psychopath's behaviour will show up uh, in their past indiscretions. Um, and you have to be wise in using the, the internet as well. Remember, they may well um, use testimonials, um, which you should take with a grain of salt, uh, because they feel entitled, they may have all sorts of titles and they and uh, initials after their name um, and, and support of, of certain organisations. I think we have to see through all that. We have to be wise and take the bull by the horns, if you like. I'll give you the example of, say, Jimmy Savile in, uh, in England, who, who received honours from the Queen. Um, and for many years, it was only after he, he died that people realised how much havoc uh, he had created, and that came from brave uh, survivors and victims coming forth, initially one or two, and then more and more and more and more. Um, it's as if the organisations we trust 
uh, like the BBC almost provided a smokescreen um, for the most serious offenders. Um, the same thing you could say uh, has happened in the Catholic Church where here is another great organisation of trust, spiritual trust even, uh, that um, has covered up uh, the most serious offenders. So it's really time for us to take this into our own hands. Um, sure, we can listen to the experts, um, and I always follow the experts as well, but it ain't worked. It hasn't worked. So we need to change things. We need to become educated in this. We're all learning together, and hence this is what this series is about. So the first thing to do is, is how to spot them is to do a background check on them, and that's that. we can do that through the internet. We can sort of do it if we're about to vote for somebody through um, the media, but we have to be very cautious, of course, um, because um, uh, the media itself uh, may have a higher proportion of psychopaths <laughs> than the rest of the population. The majority aren't, of course. Uh, like the majority of politicians aren't psychopathic. One could say they have a, a narcissism that extends beyond the healthy in certain cases. Um, <clears throat> but uh, no, I think we have to do our own legwork and we have to use our own discretion in that. Um, and if, for instance, you're meeting somebody uh, for dating or uh, the internet, then be cautious, do ask around, do not um, jump into a relationship um, without really doing the groundwork. Um, and sometimes you can do that through the internet, sometimes it's just through, um, it takes a bit of time through um, a close contacts or whatever. I still think probably the best relationships come from within our group of close contacts so that we are supported through those relationships. Um, with a nice uh, blanket of um, compassion, love and sensibility. Okay. When you meet these people, it is damn difficult to pick all right, whether they're psychopathic. That's the whole point. I've taken a long time in my life to even address this issue. Um, so I think most people are fooled and we have to realise that. Um, when somebody does turn out to be a psychopath, in general, looking back, um, one is seduced by a sort of glib manner. Um, the psychopaths will wear a mask, a mask of respectability, even a mask of niceness, a sort of smile that um, doesn't quite make it when you look back. But at the time, uh, we can be seduced by, by, these, by these traits. And this is something that, that grows on us. So I would be particularly suspicious of somebody who is glib and yet it would appear uh, that their actions don't quite match the confidence that they seem to have uh, on their faces. And it's the age-old um, story of uh, if you're going out with a guy um, and he's really nice to you and you sit down for a meal um, and he's rude to the waiter or the waitress or the wait person, um, just be careful uh, because we know that he is putting on an act and it is likely that his true self is, re is reflected in uh, those little uh, uh, connections with other people. So be careful of that. In general, um, the psychopath, well, they, they, they all have no empathy, zero empathy. But they have developed little tricks along the way uh, to pretend they have, sort of, have empathy. Um, so the more we can, we can understand about empathy, uh, the better, so because we can early on pick up the signs. Um, say somebody, say you're talking to somebody about your illness or whatever, then do use your intuition to feel that really they're, they're um, alongside you. Um, those who are trying to uh, offer advice before listening, um, just, just, just watch, uh, watch those people. Ultimately, a lot of us do that. And that doesn't mean we're psychopaths, but I'm just looking at little, little hints that you can get. So if you feel that they're low in empathy or something about their empathy um, doesn't quite click with you, um, then that's a sign just to be cautious as well. Um, and I've talked about entitlement. Um, uh, the psychopath uh, feels that they are special. Um, they feel they are the king of the jungle. Um, that's about the only thing they feel. They don't actually feel a lot of other things that we feel they're not. They don't feel true empathy for others. Um, they will see 
uh, others, as I say, as prey. So they will feel entitled. So how they act uh, when you first meet them, or in a work situation, if you've joined a company and you see somebody acting um, as if they're particularly special, um, be aware uh, of that. Um, most psychopaths aren't murderers. You don't find uh, the majority of psychopaths in prison. Um, uh, most psychopaths uh, are out there mixing with the rest of us. As I say, there's about we're talking about one percent in the uh, in the general population, but we'll find that those uh, in positions of power, um, there may well be uh, up to ten percent uh, of the people in positions of power have these dangerous traits. So. Um, uh, Maybe that those people in power who are trying to give us advice be cautious about them themselves, be cautious about me, check up on me as well, check up on everybody. Um, and the other thing is that the psychopaths that I have met now and I'm understanding don't have a great sense of humour because to have a sense of humour one has to laugh at oneself. They may have a sort of a wry smile and it may be a derisive, rather nasty little streak putting people down um, but they they're not really that funny um, they may well become I suppose a comedian with a mask who's a totally different person than the um, person they really are, really are at so we've got to be careful with that but in general um, they're not a big chuckle to be around okay so that's just uh, an outline of how to uh, spot a psych psychopath I'm going to go far more into some of these uh, as the series progress, particularly to look at the mannerisms of psychopaths, how they talk, what they say, what they don't say, um, who they blame, who they deflect on, uh, how they uh, recruit others um, in this spectrum to do their lying for them. Um, I'll go through all that. Meanwhile, please subscribe down here because I want to grow the community. Um, and. Uh, uh, I want your feedback as well. This isn't an inclusive few minutes uh, uh, on, on the whole area. This is what I'm learning about uh, uh, psychopathy um, and why I feel it's hugely important. Because so the, the few uh, out there uh, can create uh, havoc and are creating havoc for the majority of people who are um, kind, open-hearted folk like you. Um, and at times like me, I hope. Okay, so thank you very much. Bye.